Today's lesson is on the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. If we know the lengths of any two sides of a right triangle, we can find the length of the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that if a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A Pythagorean triple is a set of non-zero whole numbers, a, b, and c, that satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here are some common Pythagorean triples. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. In example one, we will find the length of the hypotenuse. What is the length of the hypotenuse of triangle ABC? Do the side lengths of triangle ABC form a Pythagorean triple? Explain. Since triangle ABC is a right triangle and we have the length of two sides, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Since sides AC and BC are legs, we will use 20 and 21 for A and B in our Pythagorean theorem. 20 squared is 400, and 21 squared is 441. So 841 equals C squared. Take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 841 equals C. Since the square root of 841 is 29, the length of side AC, or the hypotenuse, is 29. Since all three side lengths are non-zero whole numbers, the sides of the triangle ABC do form a Pythagorean triple. Pause the video and do you try number one. In part A, the legs of a right triangle have lengths of 10 and 24. What is the length of the hypotenuse? Let's start with the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Since 10 and 24 are the lengths of the legs, we will substitute 10 for A and 24 for B. 10 squared is 100 and 24 squared is 576. So 676 equals C squared. Take the square root of both sides and the square root of 676 will equal C. Since the square root of 676 is 26, the length of the hypotenuse is 26 units. Part B wants to know if the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. Since 10, 24, and 26 are all non-zero whole numbers that fit the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared, they are a Pythagorean triple. In part two, we will find the length of a leg. What is the value of x? Express your answer in simplest radical form. Since we have a right triangle and we know the length of two sides of the triangle, let's start with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Since 8 and x are the lengths of the legs, we will substitute those in for a and b. Since 20 is the length of the hypotenuse, we will substitute that for c. 8 squared is 64, and 20 squared is 400. Subtract 64 from both sides, and x squared equals 336. Take the square root of both sides, and x will equal the square root of 336. Since 336 is not a perfect square, we need to simplify. I know that 16 and 21 are factors of 336, so I will take the square root of 16 times the square root of 21. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 21 cannot be simplified, is not, also is not a perfect square, so 4 times the square root of 21 is the length of x. Pause the video and do you try number two. The hypotenuse of a right triangle has a length of 12. One leg has length six. What is the length of the other leg? Express your answer in simplest radical form. Since we're working with a right triangle and we know the length of two sides, let's start with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Since six is the length of a leg, we'll substitute it in for a, and we'll use 12 for c since it is the length of the hypotenuse. 6 squared is 36, and 12 squared is 144. Subtract 36 from both sides, and b squared equals 108. 
Take the square root of both sides and b will equal the square root of 108. Since 108 is not a perfect square, we're going to have to rewrite it in simplest radical form. I know that 36 times 3 equals 108. Since the square root of 36 is 6, we will be left with 6 times the square root of 3 as the length of the other leg. In example 3, we will find a distance. Dog agility courses often contain a seesaw obstacle as shown below. To the nearest inch, how far above the ground are the dog's paws when the seesaw is parallel to the ground? Since we have a right triangle and we know the length of two sides of the triangle, let's start with the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Since 26 is the length of the leg, we will substitute that in for a. And since 36 is the length of the hypotenuse, we'll substitute that for c. 26 squared is 676, and 36 squared is 1,296. Subtract 676 from both sides, and b squared equals 620. Take the square root of both sides, and b equals the square root of 620. Now, since we, in real life we don't tell somebody a distance in radical form, we're actually going to take the square root of 620, and since it's not a perfect square, we will round. Since our question asked us to round to the nearest inch, we are going to use the 8 to round 24.8997 blah 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 up to 25 inches. So the dog's paws are about 25 inches above the ground when the seesaw is parallel to the ground. Pause the video and do you try 3. The size of a computer monitor is the length of its diagonal. You want to buy a 19 inch monitor that has a height of 11 inches. What is the width of the monitor? Round to the nearest tenth of an inch. Let's start with the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Since 11 and x are the lengths of the legs of the right triangle, let's substitute those in for a and b. Since 19 is the length of the hypotenuse, we'll substitute that for c. 11 squared is 121, and 19 squared is 361. Subtract 121 from both sides, and x squared equals 240. Take the square root of both sides, and x will equal the square root of 240. Take the square root of 240 on your calculator, and rounding to the nearest tenth of an inch, since 4 is in the tenths place, we'll use the 9 to round the 4 up to a 5. So the computer monitor is approximately 15.5 inches wide. We can use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle. If the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two shorter sides of the triangle equals the square of the length of the longest side of the triangle, then the triangle is a right triangle. In example 4, we will identify a right triangle. A triangle has side lengths 85, 84, and 13. Is it a right triangle? We know that if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. We know that the longest side of a triangle is its hypotenuse. So let's use 85 as c and 84 and 13 as a and b. 84 squared is 7056. 13 squared is 169. And 85 squared is 7225. 7056 plus 169 equals 7225. Since 7225 equals 7225, we know a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so the triangle is a right triangle. Pause the video and do you try number four. A triangle has side lengths 16, 48, and 50. Is the triangle a right triangle? Explain. Let's use 50 in place of C since it is the longest side, and 16 and 48 for A and B. 16 squared is 256, 48 squared is 2,304, and 50 squared is 2,500. 256 plus 2,304 is 2,560. Since 2,560 does not equal 2,500, the triangle is not a right triangle. Once we know which length represents the hypotenuse, does it really matter which length you substitute for A and which length you substitute for B? Why or why not? No, since 
a squared plus b squared is the same as saying b squared plus a squared, the numbers you substitute for a and b do not matter. The theorems below allow us to determine whether a triangle is acute or obtuse. These theorems relate to the hinge theorem, which states that the longer side is opposite the larger angle and the shorter side is opposite the smaller angle. In theorem 8-3, if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is greater than the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides, then the triangle is obtuse. In theorem 8-4, if the square of the lengths of the longest side of the triangle is less than the sum of the square of the lengths of the shorter two sides, then the triangle is acute. In example five, we will classify a triangle. A triangle has lengths of six, 11, and 14. Is it acute, obtuse, or right? Remember, the longest side is going to be C, and A and B will be the shorter two sides. Six squared is 36, and 11 squared is 121. 14 squared is 196. 36 plus 121 is 157. Since 157 is less than 196, C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared, making the triangle obtuse. Pause the video and do you try number four. Is a triangle with side lengths 7, 8, and 9 acute, obtuse, or right? Let's use 9 in place of C and 7 and 8 for A and B. 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, and 9 squared is 81. 49 plus 64 is 113, and since 113 is greater than 81, the triangle is acute because A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, please be sure to ask in class. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale after going over the lesson?